Listen to this, guys. And this is where the whole thing, you know, there's some times that are coming. No matter where we find ourselves, if it's in a tent, if it's in a cardboard box, we need to learn to be, you know, complacent no matter where we find ourselves. Because Amen. when things begin to change, you know, we're not going to fit in. You realize that. A square block ain't going to fit in a round hole. You understand? Right. And we're going to be the square blocks not fitting in with this world. Right. So listen to this. Chapter 3. Finally, my brethren, chapter 3. I'm only reading chapter 3. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write, uh, to write the same things to you. Um, I, I, want a NS, I want a NASB. Here you go. I don't have my... Uh, my one that Charlene gave me with me. See it? Big letter. Thank you, brother. <laughs> Appreciate your goodness. Listen to this. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things again is no trouble to, uh, to me. And it is a safeguard for you. So it's no big deal. He's writing it for you. He says, beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of false circumcision. That's the Jews. He's now, hey, don't let them come in and Judaize you and bring you back under the law. Okay? For we are the true circumcision who worship in the Spirit of God and the glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh. Paul, if anybody could, he could. Right? So don't, he's not joined in that he's a Pharisee or whatever. Although I myself might have confidence, even in the flesh, if anyone else has a mind to put confidence in the flesh, I far more have, uh, or more confident than them. If it was according to the flesh of the stock of whatever you was born, or your deeds and what you've done, or whatever. Um, I was circumcised on the eighth day of the nation of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin. That word tribe is of the stock, right? We know about stock. And Cherie knows about stock and bread and the, the breed. A Hebrew of Hebrews to the law, a Pharisee. That says it, it right there, brother. To be a Pharisee, you quote in the Torah verbatimly by your 13 years old. You realize that? Amen. As to zeal, a persecutor of the church. As to righteousness which is in the law, I was found blameless. Right? And Paul's saying there is no uh, you know, salvation in the law. But whatever things were gained to me, whatever things were gained, that means where he was. He was in line to be the high priest. Whatever things was gained to me, being a Pharisee, being of the circumcision, of the eighth day, of the stock of Benjamin, I found, listen to what he says, but whatever things were gained to me, those things I've counted as loss for the sake of Christ. More than that, I count all things to be lost in the view of surpassing the value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. That's you and me. You know Jesus Christ, you might have to suffer loss of all things. There might be a day that we're carrying our sleeping bags. You understand? And count them but as rubbish so that I may gain Christ. And may be found in Him, not having a righteousness of my own derived from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship in His sufferings being conformed to His death. That means expect it. Expect it. That's not the message, the prosperity gospel, your best life now. If you get thrown into a hole, well, guess what? Accept it. Right. Wow. No matter where you're at. Listen, in order that I may attain the resurrection from the dead, not that I have already obtained it or have already become perfect, but I press on, he doesn't stop, so that I may lay hold of that for which also I was laid hold of by Christ Jesus. Brethren, I do not regard myself as laying hold of it yet. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press. I press. That means work towards. Push hard. Struggle. Contend.
contend. Fight! Amen. It's not an easy road. That's not the gospel preached today. Come to Jesus and everything's perfect and fine. Guess what? Your house can burn. You can lose everything. But hold on to Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Go ahead. Amen. I must be doing something wrong because I'm in jail. The letter was written from prison. Right. That's right. And in chapter 2 he says, I stand between the twigs. I'm about to be headed and be poured out like a drink offering. But I'm not giving up. Amen. You want another message today? Don't give up. Amen. Amen. That's right. No matter what. Amen. Right. Because you're going to see things you're going to have to walk through and face. Amen. You and me. Is it about me having a bigger house or people having bigger houses or bigger planes or more money? Paul says in Philippians, as in Corinthians, I know what it is. I know what it is to be without. I was flogged five times. I took 39 lashes. Three times I was beat with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times in the deep, left for dead. Is that the press? Is that the gospel that's being preached today? No. Well, brother, that don't sound like good news to me. Hold on! That's right. Contend! Fight! Ah! I'm not quitting! Amen. Amen. Overcome. That's right. Why? Brethren. Yeah. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. You understand what that means? He is our prize. Amen. Yeah. What are you pressing for? Are you pressing for a big house? Are you pressing for money? Are you pressing for a good life now? What is the whole, what is the whole reason that you serve Him? He's the prize. That's right. I serve him because he gave me a big house. Well, guess what? When your big house is gone, you're going to leave him. That's right. Amen. Let us therefore as many as are perfect. That word perfect there in the Hebrew is the word mature. Nobody's perfect, only Jesus Christ. That's right. Amen. Let us therefore as many as are perfect, having this attitude, and if anything, you have a different attitude, God will reveal that also to you. However, let us keep living by the same standard of which we have attained. Brethren, join in the following, my example, and observe those who walk according to the pattern you have in us. Listen to me. Paul was a Pharisee. He left the temple. He had all the money he needed. He was in line to be the, the high priest. He had it all. He said, I count it as dung, dung, dung. Nice. For the sake of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. I left the temple. I left the high places. I left the gold and the silver and meat on my plate every day to learn what it is to be now without nothing. Amen. I press toward the mark. He had a visitation. He seen Jesus Christ and sold out. That's right. Amen. Are you sold out? Are you fully persuaded, Paul said? Let this mind be in you. <laughs> Brethren, join in the follow of my example. Observe those who walk according to the pattern you have in us. He's warning them of these false teachers that are coming in and robbing them and taking what they got. Come on, brother. Bringing them under subjection back unto the law. Telling them, it ain't the law that saves you. I don't care what stock or tribe you're from. Okay. For many walk of whom I often told you, I've often told you, and now tell you even weeping, 
They that are enemies of the cross of Christ that teaches anything other than the cross is salvation. Well, I gotta keep Sabbath. Uh, I gotta wear tassels on my side. I gotta wear a big beard. Well, you now you're adding to it Christ. Well, you, uh, you know the cross is not. It's not finished. It's not enough. I gotta wear my tassels. I gotta wear the skin. Or I gotta wear the hat. Or I gotta do something else in order to be saved. No. You're telling God He didn't. What He did wasn't enough. <coughs> For many walk, of whom I've often told you, and now I tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their appetite. That appetite right there is the desirement of the flesh, what they can get from you. Whose gods are their bellies in the King James Version, it says. Wanting to make merchandise of you. Paul said, I've warned you of these things whose glory is their shame, who set their minds on earthly things. Big buildings, big houses, fine cars and big jets. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which also we eagerly wait for a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ who will transform the body of our humble state unto conformity with the body of His glory by the exertion of the power that He has even to subject all things to Himself. <coughs> I want to show you one more thing. We'll stop. One more. I want to let you know something. Philippians, the connecting scripture to Philippians is Acts 16. Acts 16 is the connecting. The other connector to Philippians chapter 3 is 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Let's have some fun now. Let's see. Let's have some fun. Let's see if this is the gospel that is being preached today. Watch this. You see, you prepared. Watch this. Paul's going to speak as a fool. As a man, he says. Watch what he says. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. I wish that you would bear with me a little, a li in a little foolishness. Now remember, in the Corinthian church, they're dealing with the same thing. The Judaizers are coming in and drifting them away. And because of their rank and what they are and the money and all of this kind of stuff, you know, oh, we're from Benjamin. Oh, we're from Judah. We're from this. We're from, we're a Levite. Man, don't listen to none of that stuff. Paul says, now watch. I wish that you would bear with me in a little foolishness. But indeed, you are bearing with me. For I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy. I betrothed you to one husband, so that Christ, I might present you as a pure virgin. He won these guys. These are his converts, right? But I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve, back to the garden, by his craftiness, your mind will be led astray from the, the simplicity and the purity of devotion to Christ. So it doesn't come through the law. Watch what he says. For if one comes and preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached, or you receive a different spirit which you have not received, or a different gospel which you have not accepted, you bear this beautifully. You accept it. You accept it. It's being accepted in the churches. Amen. All over the place. Another gospel. The gospel of good news is, guess what? You have to die in order to obtain. I'm sorry. For I consider myself not in the least inferior to most of these imitant apostles. He says, but even if I am unskilled in speech, yet I am not so in knowledge. So you listen to these philosophers <laughs> that speak eloquently, but don't know nothing. Paul knew the word. They don't. 
Amen. problem today. Amen. Preachers preach the word and don't know it, but got little bitty, nice little tactical laid out little bitty things that you fall right underneath. Six ways that you could do this and do that. And don't know the word. Amen. But even if I am unskilled in speech, yet I am not knowledge. Knowledge is the old covenant. Right? Understanding is a new covenant. Wisdom is knowledge and understanding together. Old and new put together. The bridge. Wisdom. Walk me across the bridge. You're teaching me something? Walk me across the bridge into the old covenant and show it to me. Because if it doesn't line up there, it's error. You understand? Right. Let's keep going. But even if I'm unskilled in speech, yet I am not so in knowledge. In fact, in every way we have made this evident to you in all things. Paul understands. Or did I commit a sin in humbling myself so that you might be exalted? Because I preached the gospel of God to you without charge? Wow. Wow. Paul wasn't taking a tithe. I didn't even charge you for the gospel because it's free. But when these other guys come in, watch what he says. I robbed other churches by taking wages from them to serve you. Watch. And when I was present with you and was in need, I was not a burden to anyone. For when the brethren came to Macedonia, they fully supplied my need. And in everything, I kept myself from being a burden to you, and I will continue to do so. That means he's still not taking nothing from them. Okay. Wow. Watch what he says. As the truth of Christ is in me, this boasting of mine will not be stopped in the regions of Achaia. That's Greece. Okay? Why? Because I do not... Why? Question mark. Because I do not love you? God knows I do. But what I am doing, I will continue to do that I may cut off the opportunity from those who desire an opportunity to be regarded just as we are in the matter about which they are boasting. Okay? For such men are false apostles, deceitful workers, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. Remember last week's message? I told you about delusion, deception, yeah. and all that stuff. Beware. Good. Beware. Yeah, right. No wonder they do this. Why? Verse 14. For even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Therefore, it is not surprising if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness, whose end will be according to their deeds. Again I say, let no one think me foolish, but if you do, Receive even as foolishness, so that I also may boast a little. So Paul is simply saying, these guys that are taking advantage of you, that are teaching you lies, that are living off you and taking all your money and doing all of these things, are leading you straight to hell. But you bear them because of who they are and of the stock they are and what they say. And they charging you and taking your money. Yeah. And, you know, I haven't been. But if they're going to boast on who they are and all of this, I'm going to speak foolishly now. I'm just going to speak as a fool, Paul says. I don't want to. And God knows what I'm about to say is foolishness. Because it doesn't matter of what tribe or who you are or what apostle you are or whatever it is because it's a circumcision of the spirit, of the heart, and not of flesh. He says, now let me boast. <laughs> Let's boast, Paul said. He says, what I'm saying, I'm not saying as the Lord would. Oh, so he's letting you know, hey, this isn't what the Lord told me to say. I'm now going to speak foolishly. So you can understand, so you could see, he says. But in foolishness, it's like me saying, okay, I'm just going to mess around with you guys. Like, you think these guys over there, you know, or, or you know, they think they know it. Well, hey, let me tell you something. I lived in Israel for 15 years. I know all their customs. I teach their customs. I do this, I do that, I do this. And you're going to listen to this knucklehead over there who lives in the weather and know nothing? 
that's just boasting. Now I ain't lived in Israel 15 years, but this is what Paul's going to do. And he said, I'm just speaking stupidly here, he says, but listen to what he says. He's amazing. Again, I say, let no one think me foolish, but if you, verse 16, do, receive me even as foolish, so that I also may boast a little. What I'm saying, I'm not saying as the Lord would, but as in foolishness and the confidence of boasting. Since many boast according to the flesh, I will boast also. Okay? He says, For you, being so wise, tolerate foolish the foolishly gladly. You tolerate foolishness, the foolishly people that come here gladly. You receive them. Right? For you tolerate, you tolerate it if anyone enslaves you. Wow. Anyone who devours you. <laughs> anyone who takes advantage of you. Anyone who exalts himself above you. Oh, look who it is. Let's go run over there. Oh, Pastor such and such. Oh, oh it's him. Oh, we sow nothing. Give me a break, man. You don't put him on a pedestal. He's your God. You lost it. That's what Paul's saying. For you, being so wise, tolerate foolishly gladly. For you tolerate if anyone enslaves you. Wow. Anyone who devours you. Anyone who takes advantage of you. Anyone who exalts himself. Anyone who hits you in the face. Now listen to what he says here. To my shame, I must say that we have been weak by comparison. <laughs> that means Paul said, I didn't beat you, enslave you, smack you in your face. And what he means that a slap in the face is meaning like, you know, a word to, you know, oh, you think you all of that? Miss Floozy or whatever you think you are? I seen you last week. It's a knockdown, a slap in the face, to be thrown underneath the bus, to, <laughs> to have your foot. Oh, can you get your foot off my back? <laughs> That's a joke between me and my friend. But in whatever respect anyone else is bold, I speak in foolishness. I am just as bold myself. He goes, are they Jews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they descendants of Abraham? So am I. Are they the servants of Christ? Question. Question mark. I speak as if I was insane. <laughs> Watch it. I, the more so, <laughs> in far more labors and far more imprisonments, beaten uh, times without number. And it says five times in the King James. Often in danger of death. Five times I received from the Jews 39 lashes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was ship shipwrecked day and night and I have spent in the deep. Now, expect this. If you're going to be a follower of Jesus Christ, well, this might happen to you. Do we have anybody that wants to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior and come and follow Him? <laughs> well, come on up. Look, come to the altar. Look, we'll, read, we'll, lead you to the, we'll lead you into the sinner's prayer. Say this little simple prayer and everything's going to be all right and you're going to get you a nice big fat house and God's going to bless you and you're going to have everything you need. Look, just come on up here and say this little simple prayer. But know that, and that's, you know, false teaching, but know that when you leave here, hey, you might lose everything. They might come after you. They might imprison you. Well, surely God doesn't want me in prison. Well, surely, you know, this wouldn't be happening to me if I'm a Christian. Well, surely, you know, that something is not right here, you know. Read the Bible! Oh. It's there! Right. Amen. Right. Be ready to suffer. Ah! Be ready to suffer That's for his right. sake. That's right. I'm tired of that panty anti gospel junk. Amen. That's the Bible. That's right. That's right. You're right. Just reading the Bible to you. I'm not interpreting it. Just reading it. I'm just reading it. That's right. <laughs> you, you are interpreting it. That's it. Uh, I'm just saying. <laughs> Let's keep going. Three times I was beaten at rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day have I spent in the deep. Can I get anybody that wants to come aboard? Yeah, amen. Yeah. Have I been? Uh, I have been frequent in journeys and in dangers from rivers, dangerous from robbers, dangerous from my own countrymen, own countrymen. Wow. Dangers from the Gentiles. Dangers in the city. Dangers in the wilderness. Dangers on the sea. Dangers among false brethren. This guy. 
I bet he's glad to be in prison. <laughs> At least he's eating and he's safe. Now, I know his head's going to be cut off, but thank you, Jesus, he's probably saying, I found a count in all joy, no matter where I find myself. Three hundred to God. <laughs> I have been in labor and hardship through many sleepless nights and hunger and in thirst. So if you are a Christian, you might find yourself in hunger and in thirst and in prison and in shipwreck and in beatings and in scourgings and frequent journeys and dangers by the rivers, dangers by robbers, dangers by countrymen, dangers by the own people that's living in your own house. Ah, not only in your own house, in your own church. Oh, wow, what was that? You look back, a sheep biting you. Oh my God. I didn't know that sheep bite. That's got to be a goat. <laughs> Golly, they got a dentist in here to pull out the teeth. I've been gnawed on. <laughs> Apart from such, I have been in labor and in hardship through many sleepless nights in hunger and in thirst, often without food in the cold and and exposed. Man, I kind of remember something in Timothy. Timothy, when you come, I'm in prison and I'm about to die. Bring the parchments, but especially my cloak, my clothes. I'm freezing. <laughs> Apart from such external things, there is daily pressure on me of concern for all the churches. His is hard. Uh, oh, when the poop hits the fan, <laughs> it's flat. Uh, and they go run to the big churches to get that pastor. Yeah. Where is he gonna be? Yes, uh right. -huh. He's taking off. Is he Definitely. looking out for his sheep? He's running. Only if they send the send the. Please save money. He's on his big jet, flight of a Y. Who is weak without me being weak? Who is led into sin without my intense concern about you? Man, he's telling them this because he loves them. Yes, he, he don't want these false teachers. He's want, he don't want them to be manipulated. Right. He don't want them giving their money, you know, to these television evangelists that's out there. Send me your seed money. A thousand dollars. God wants to bless you. So a thousand, you're going to reach a, a hundred thousand. Call them up. Hey, send me a seed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need something I can plant before I can sow into you. That's Paul. They're mer making merchandise of them. They're teaching you false gospels. Amen. If I have to boast, I'll boast of what pertains to my weakness, he says. The God and Father of the Lord Jesus, who is blessed forever, knows that I am not lying. Yeah. In Damascus, the Enrock under Artus, the king, was guarding the city in Damascus, or Damascenes, in order to seize me. And I was let down in a basket through a window in the wall, and I escaped his hands. Boasting is necessary, though it is not profitable. But I will go on to visions and revelations. He doesn't stop there, brother. He doesn't stop. He says, I know a man in Christ, it's him, who was 14 years ago, this is when he has an, his encounter with Jesus Christ, whether I was in the body or out, I don't, I don't know. God knows such a man was caught up into the third heaven. This is Paul. And I know how such a man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know, only God knows, was caught up into paradise, and I heard inexpressible words which a man is not permitted to speak. On behalf of such a man, I will boast. Wow. But on my own behalf, I will not boast except in regard to my weakness. For if I do wish to boast, I will not be foolish. For I will speak for I will be speaking the truth, but I refrain from this, so that no one will credit me with more than he sees in me or hears from me. He doesn't even boast in what he knows so that people won't consider him more high, highly than he is. He's just a man. Right. Humbled, abased. Right. Not to be raised up or put on a pedestal. Right? 
Because of the suppressing greatness of revelations, for this reason, to keep me from being exalted in myself, there was given me a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan, uh, to torment me, to keep me from exalting myself. Concerning this, I employ the Lord three times that it might leave me. Now, I'm going to give you a couple of scriptures real quick. Write these down. What the message, what that thorn in the flesh could be. Okay? That thorn in the flesh could actually be... Um, uh, i got to give this to you so you won't... Uh, very important that you check this out. All right, that message, that message in the flesh, come on, where you at? Where you? All right, it can, here's the three scriptures it, it goes with, a thorn in the flesh could be. You can read Joshua 23, verse 13. Okay, I looked this up. You can read Numbers 33, 55. And you can read Ezekiel 28, 24. I'm just going to go to Joshua 23, 13. Numbers 33, 55. Uh-huh. Numbers 33, 55. We all believe that Paul had an, uh, uh, an issue in his eyes. But another thing that this could be. And this is, this is Joshua chapter 23, verse 13. It says, Know for a certainty that the Lord God will no more drive out any of these nations from before you, but they shall be snares and traps unto you, and scourges in your sides, and thorns in your eyes, until you perish from off the good land with the Lord. A thorn in your flesh could be someone you work with. A thorn in your flesh could be your neighbor. A thorn in your flesh could be someone you're in church with. Yeah. Wow. The thorn in Paul's flesh could have been someone he was traveling with. But the thorn in his flesh could have been his eyes as well. Right. I gave you the three verses where it tells you about thorns in the side. Those are two. Okay, here it is. It's uh it's Joshua 23:13. Numbers 33, verse 55, and Ezekiel 28, verse 24. John, I think I beat your Bible up, son. I didn't rip it, though. I didn't rip it. 28. I didn't rip it. 28, 24. Ezekiel 28, 24. Okay. All right, Thorn. Because of this suppressing greatness of revelations, for this reason he kept me from exalting myself. There was given unto me a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from exalting myself. So this vision he saw, he's letting you know it's him. It's him that was caught up. And he has understanding that will fall, surpass, blow all those people away. You understand? He knows. Concerning this, I implored the Lord three times in the, in, uh, that it might leave me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for you. My power is perfected in your weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather boast about my weakness, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Understand, when we weak, he's strong, it says. Therefore, I am well content with weakness, with insults, with distresses. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Now we get into the, now we get into the, to the meat of it. Now, it goes back to me being just in this a nice room show you my folly I was in a nice room nice beds a kitchen a roof over my head beautiful room oh but it just wasn't quite pleasing to my flesh because it wasn't big enough man that's my folly that's flesh this is my message you understand? Yeah. Listen to this. He says, uh, both distresses and... Okay, he says, um, he says, Therefore I will be... I, I am well content with weakness, with insults, distresses, with persecutions, with difficulties, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I have become foolish. You yourselves compelled me. Actually, I should have been, I should have been commended by you. For in no respect was I inferior to the most impotent apostles. Even though I am a nobody. The signs of a true apostle were performed among you with all perseverance by signs and wonders and miracles. For in what respect were you treated as inferior to the rest of the churches, except that I myself did not become a burden to you? Forgive me in this wrong. Here, 
for this third time, I am ready to come to you, and I will not be a burden to you. That's Paul saying, I ain't taking money again. Right? For I do not seek what is yours, but you. Man. Man. How many can say that? Man, that's all I want. That's right. I want you in heaven. That's right. I want to see you there. Amen. I don't want to have to stand in front of God and give account that I robbed from you or try to manipulate you in any kind of way. Amen. My whole goal is to see you there. Amen. And see others there. Amen. And tell you, don't be deceived by these people that are out there. That's right. Amen. Why? Because I love you. I do. I'm not perfect. And don't put me on a pedestal. Because I'm a man. And I have faults. And I deal with the flesh. Like you. Here for this third time, I'm ready to come to you. And I will not be a burden to you. For I do not seek what is yours, but you. For children are not responsible to save up for their parents. But parents for their children. Listen, you know, that means me being a shepherd. I didn't, make, I didn't bring a lot of you to the Lord. The majority of you I didn't bring to the Lord. But... You know, I care about you. And it's, I got to provide for you. Because a shepherd feeds their sheep. That's right. Not so much where it is right now. The shepherds are ravaging the sheep. And saying, feed me. They begging on the TVs. Feed me. Give me. Or God's going to curse you. <laughs> I will most gladly spend and be expended for your souls. If I love you more, am I to be loved less? But be that as it may, I did not burden you myself. Nevertheless, crafty fellow that nevertheless crafty fellow that I am I took you in by deceit certainly I have not taken advantage of you through any of those who have I've sent to you I urged Titus to go and I sent the brother with him Titus did not take advantage of you did he did we not conduct ourselves in, in the same spirit and walk in the same steps it reminds me of, you know, uh, Elisha and his servant. Remember when, uh, what's his name, came to wash in the water seven times. What was his name? He was the... Uh, Naaman. Naaman, right. Naaman the leper. Naaman the leper came to be cleansed. And Elisha said, go dip in the Jordan seven times. And he wanted to pay him. He said, no, it's free. Remember? And then after he left, he insisted on giving Elisha. He said, no, it's free. But then after he was gone, the servant of Elisha ran behind him. My master said, give him, you know, 20 shekels of silver. And oh, sure, sure, sure. And surely he died. Wow. Wow. All this time, you have been thinking uh, that we are defending ourselves to you. Actually, it is in the sight of God that we have been speaking in Christ. And all for your upbuilding, beloved. I'm doing this and telling you this so that whatever comes down the pipe, you guys are informed and ready. No matter where we find ourselves, you'll say, okay, if I'm being beaten, you know, is it going to hurt or whatever? Well, that's totally up to Christ, I'm sure. I don't know. But no matter where you find yourself, okay, Lord, this is where you have me. Not, oh, well, surely God doesn't have me here. I need to go get this mark, or I got to do this so I can go get me some food. Because he definitely, I mean, is, is God going to feed his children? Or, I mean, what are we? What's happening here? What kind of God is that? Well, a God that you don't understand. A God that you don't understand. A God that you haven't spent time with. A God that you haven't read his word. Right. <laughs> For I am afraid that perhaps when I've come, I may find you to be 
uh, not what I wish and may be found by you uh, to be not what I wish. That perhaps there will be strife, jealousy, anger, tempers, disputes, slanders, gossip, arrogance, and disturbances in the church. I am afraid that when I come again, my God will humiliate me before you. And I may mourn over many of those who have sinned in the past and not repented of the impurity, the immorality, and the sensuality which they have practiced. Well, I want to tell you, and I'm going to stop right there. I think you guys got the message yeah. um, a long time ago. But I want to tell you something. Um, uh, what I want to tell them, Lord. <laughs> Lord, what did I want to tell them? That was it. Lord. Lord. Golly, it left me that quick. Um, God's good, man. He is. God is amazing. And uh, you know what? In all of this, I'm telling you, we. Uh, Springtime's coming. Yes. You know. You said this. I'm quoting you. Bloom where you're planted. That's right. Bloom where God has planted you. That's right. That's right. Yes. Uh, God's been having me work on this word testimony. The word testimony means do it again, God. That's right. That's what testimony means. And I'm prophesying to you that you're going to come back to the new testimony. Come on. Richard stuff. I'm I'm ready. That do it again, God, always is a planting where the spirit repeats and does again. Those who hear the testimony. Everything today has been a testimony, that's right. And it is repeating even in us as hearers. Do it again, God, in us. That's right. Things he's you, you know we can say he did it here, he's doing it at us, and we pass it up. You know, do it again. my whole thing is that you guys are not deceived. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. And uh, Father, your word is good. Lord, I didn't, uh, I'm not bashing any of your ministers or anything like that, your true ministers, Father, but just warning the sheep, Father, that are here of the false teachers, Father. The ones, the the dogs that you told us to warn us about, be yeah. that, you know, um, you know, when will these things be? First thing you said is, you know, uh, don't be deceived, you know. So, Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, that the springtime is upon us, and Lord, that new growth is coming, Father, that you're going to begin to sow into people's lives again, and and uh, just. Uh, Life is coming forth, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen and amen.